Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. Now this one, I don't know if it's really current, but it's something I came across the other day I thought I would share with you guys. And it's about the actor Chris Evans and his transformation for Captain America. So let me put on my plus five out of weapons, Billy. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. And you know, some of these celebrity transformations, a lot of people need to understand these physiques are often obtainable by the general population. Now, some people are going to say, well, you know, a lot of them have aesthetic bone structures and everything. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they probably do have an aesthetic structure. They tend to have aesthetic faces. That's why they make it as actors, right? They're usually good looking dudes. There are exceptions, but most of them are. But that doesn't mean that the physiques that they have are unobtainable. I'm not going to get all into talking about drugs on this one because I don't think that the transformation he pulled off actually requires drugs. Doesn't mean he didn't use anything, but I don't think it requires them. Uh, and the difference here is I'm gonna jump in the little bit of info we have on training. It's gonna match what I and a few other people who know what they're talking about have been telling all of you guys for years. All right, people who don't have extreme proportions don't need extreme programs to go ahead and put on a solid amount of muscle on their frame. And truth be told, that's all aesthetics is. Of, of maximizing the aesthetics of your individual structure is to put on a fair amount of proportionate muscle through your body, get relatively lean, all right? It's just that athletic look. And that athletic look that guys like Evans have isn't the bodybuilder look, right? And the bodybuilder look is not gonna win girls over for you. The bodybuilder look is not going to impress anyone but other dudes. Uh, and it's not really going to give you that look that most of you guys want, unless you're wanting to look comical. Uh, so it gets overrated. And the thing is, because this isn't an extreme physique, it doesn't require anything particularly extreme to achieve it. And the thing is, I came across something, I'll share it with you guys, uh, because this came from his actual real trainer, from Simon Watterson, got interviewed. And it turns out this is his real trainer, which you guys got to watch. Nine out of ten times when you find the training program for a celebrity, uh, it's fake. It is an article making up their interpretation of what they think you should do to get that look. And 90% of the time, it's some garbage program with 37 isolation movements and a bunch of fluff and pump that every guy blasting tons and tons and tons of drugs uses to look like a bodybuilder. Now, the reality is a lot of these guys really have more of that athletic look. That's what they have. It is the, an athlete's physique. It's not a bodybuilder physique. And really, these guys don't have to train like bodybuilders to get that look. They just need to be athletic. Well, what his trainer said, uh, this is uh, what we have here available. To help Evans add lean muscle mass quickly, Watterson gave the actor a training regiment uh, based on high weight, low rep sets of classic compound lifts, specifically squats, deadlifts, incline bench press, and weighted dips and chin ups. He also added a lot of body weight moves and included some plyometrics to fire up his fast switch muscle fibers, blah, blah, blah. All right, the reality is uh, those don't activate your fast switch fibers any more than the other lifts they did. That other stuff is secondary. You want to know where he got his results? Getting relatively lean, a good diet, uh, getting strong on basic compound movements. Now look at the list that was selected there. How many times have you guys heard something very, very similar to that from someone like me? Or even guys who a lot of you think of as having really, really good physiques. How about uh, the golden one? How about Martin Burkham? Haven't these guys basically said, listed about five exercises that if you get really strong on, you'll be reasonably aesthetic when you get your body fat in check? That if you build a solid foundation on those lifts, you'll get there. Now, in this case, is squat, deadlift, incline bench. You get it right? Weighted dips, weighted chin-ups. You know... That list looks very, very, very similar to what some other guys have said. Uh, what did Martin Burkham say? What did he always say? He says, if you get really strong on the squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, 
and weighted chin-ups, you'll be about as big a proportion as you can get. If you get really, really, really strong on those exercises, you'll do that. Uh, Martin said that in his lean gain stuff. You know, his whole approach, and it, it changed a lot of people's physiques. At least 10,000 people ran his programs and diet and ended up looking pretty decent, all right? It would be five exercises. What's the golden one always said? And keep in mind, I mean, the golden one, obviously, rather genetically gifted. But what has he said? A very, very, very similar list. If you get as strong as you can on the squat, bench press, deadlift, push press, he doesn't go overhead press, trick press, he says push press, and the weighted chin up, his list is four out of five identical to Berkham's. He says if you get really strong on those, you will probably be about as big and aesthetic as you can expect to get. Spend a few years mastering those lifts, right? This list, what does it differ? They've swapped out overhead press, Berkham's overhead press, uh, the Golden Ones push press with the incline bench. Actually, incline benching is very, very similar in the muscle activation to overhead pressing with a barbell. They're very similar, you just not get as much lower body involved. Uh, the, the muscle focus is very similar. They swapped out the bench press for the weighted dip. Well, doesn't the weighted dip work pretty much the same muscles? 95% overlap the muscle fibers involved with the bench press? Sure it does. Everything else, the other three lifts are the exact same lifts they recommended. Two lifts that are very, very similar to what both of them recommend. Um, I've generally said the same thing. All right, I've always said that. Get as strong as you can on a squat or some other sort of uh, any sort of squat, doesn't have to be the back squat, any sort of squat, any sort of hip hinge, care whether it's the deadlift or the power clean, some sort of standing overhead press, uh, weighted chin up of some type or a, weight or a row, can be somewhat interchangeable, and some sort of main chest press, like the bench press, weighted dip, close grip bench, any of those, you will probably, if you get really as strong as you possibly can on those, you're going to get about as big as you can expect to get. You're going to look fairly athletic. It's, again, if your body fat's on point, relative to your structure. And we we'll, all of us are telling everyone the same thing, get as strong as you can on them. Strength generally comes from doing heavy weight with fairly low reps. So we're not talking about one rep max, not telling you to hit maxes all the time. None of us have said that. But, you know, fairly low reps, moderately low, probably eight or less. Uh, of course, I'm big on doing triples myself. But, you know, low reps, somewhere in the three to eight rep range. That you're going to get big and athletic looking. All right, that's going to happen. If you get a little bit leaner, lose a little bit of body fat, get nice and lean, you're going to look athletic. Everyone out there who knows what they're talking about is promoting what his trainer had him do. And look at the end result. Look at the end result. Uh, by society standards, Chris Evans had an aesthetic, athletic-looking physique. Now, here's a difference. What exercises did he use to get there? A lot of heavy compound movements with heavy weight. Which means he didn't just look strong. He didn't just look athletic. He probably was pretty strong. Now, on top of that, they did a lot of plyometrics. Which, again, what are those plyometrics going to do when you have a strength base from getting really good at five or so big compound movements and then you add a bunch of plyometric? What happens? You do get fairly athletic. He didn't give him an athletic physique by training like a bodybuilder and trying to replicate an athlete's physique. He trained him like an athlete to give him an athlete's physique. Now, a lot of people out there, this seems to be lost on them. They really and truly seem to think if they go train like a bodybuilder, they're going to get that athletic-looking physique. Is that how athletes get an athletic-looking physique? No, they get an athletic physique by doing conditioning work and strength training and building a well-rounded, full-body strength, power, and speed base and then throwing in some good conditioning with it and a decent diet. That's how they look like an athlete. You look like an athlete by training like an athlete. It's kind of like when you hear a bodybuilder or someone say, oh, oh I don't want to actually bench press 400 pounds. I just want to look like I can bench press 400 pounds. You know it's actually easier and less abusive to your body and usually a lot less drugs involved. If you actually just go ahead and get strong enough to bench press 400 pounds, so that you'll look like you bench 400 pounds rather than not be able to do it and still obtain the look. All right? It usually takes a lot more exercises and a lot more drugs to pull that off. 
it actually the fastest way to get there is to just go ahead and get strong enough to bench 400 pounds if you want to look like you can bench 400 pounds and then the difference is not only that you, you can actually do what you look like beautiful how that works and, and it's hilarious because it's it's a topic that seems lost on people is this current physique culture has completely lost touch with reality of not understanding that the best way to ultimately look like you're capable of doing a thing or to have a look like an athlete is to go ahead and be an athlete. If you want to look like you're really strong, but you don't want to use a bunch of sight enhancement and inject oil and use implants and use massive amounts of drugs, the best way to look like you're really strong, probably to go ahead and just get strong. Uh, but people want to overcomplicate this. You know what? The reality is you can put on about as much size as your frame is going to hold, completely natural, by just getting good at about five to seven big basic compound movements and getting getting strong at them, improving your performance at them, and go ahead and mastering them. It'll probably get you there. And it'll also give you, you know, usually depending on your structure, reasonable proportions without anything being grotesque proportions like all the bodybuilders do who spend endless amounts of time isolating muscles and then injecting oil and crap into them. They'll never tell you about that part, do they? Uh, but I like this. I like this because this is highlighting exactly what a lot of people are trying to tell everyone who's chasing this physique stuff. You don't got to train like a bodybuilder to look like Chris Evans. You just need to train like Chris Evans trains. You may not pull his look off ultimately because you might not have his structure. But you know what? That's how he got there. Just big basic athletic and strength movements with some extra conditioning work and athletic training. That's how he got there. And that's probably for most people the best way to get there also. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.